I got another message over email um, and I'd like to make a video on it. Hello Ian, I follow all your videos on YouTube. Thank you for sharing. Uh, quick question, what do you use as inner covers and how do you top vent? I'm just a small beekeeper with 100 hives but your videos, videos are all of help. Thank you Chester. Okay, uh, this is a, a question I've been getting from lots of beekeepers around. Uh, they see my videos and they see these inner covers I'm using and it's not typical but uh, I'll show you what I do. So what I use is just simple, I call them foamies. Just uh, their bubble wrap insulation. The same time I buy it at Rona. They come in big rolls. It's You can wrap your hot water tank in them. Um, uh, you, you wrap, well, I don't know what else you do with this stuff, but I use it. I cut it off into a square chunk, the same dimension as my beehive. And what I do with it is, let's pretend this honey box is a, uh, a brood chamber, beehive. I put the, uh, the foamy on top, same dimension as the box. And when my top goes on, I like it because it helps eliminate the drafts, especially in the spring. When you crack a box and you put the lid back down, you get all these little cracks all the way around and if it's cold, that draft gets inside and I don't like it on my cluster. I have a hole, I just cut a little feed hole in here. Like that, you see? Um, I have a feed hole here. And I match that feed hole up with this hole in the plastic, like that, and then the bees have access out that hole. And then what I do is I do all my feeding, most of my feeding, with these pails, pail feeders with screens. It's just a pail, sealed top, it's got a gasket inside to create a seal. I fill my syrup up through the cap. Uh, this is a fine mesh stainless steel screen and is melted and it's embedded into this lid. There's two holes underneath that screen. So when I tip it upside down, the syrup will run out of that screen and it creates a suction within that pail. And when it does that, the surface tension on that screen will hold the syrup in the pail and the bees will come up. So the bees will come up through this hole and they'll just self feed off that screen and they'll drink that pail down. So that's how I do all my feeding. I do my feeding on the outside of the hive with these pails very efficiently. And my covers, I'll just explain what I do with my covers here. It's a migratory top, uh, flush on the side so I can stack my beehives tight together. It has cleats on the end. And these cleats, if anybody wants to know what they're for, it's just to help keep that lid on. If there's just a square piece of wood, piece of plywood on top, she'd be sliding all over the place. But because these cleats are in here, they kind of hold the top to the ends and it secures that top. So it just helps keep that lid square. Uh, these runners are on top are basically just used to lock in that when you're stacking pallets, uh, your, your runner on the pallet should fit in between here. So it just helps lock the stacking of the hives. Also on these tops, you'll notice I have a rim. It's a half inch rim all the way around. And that does two things for me. It helps put pressure on the outside of this foamy all the way around the outside. So when I put my lid on, it helps create that seal up top. The other thing it does is it creates a little bit of headspace here for uh, protein feeding. It gives a little bit of space there for that patty to sit while the bees consume it. Okay, as far as your upper entrance question, I have to answer that uh, kind of two ways. When I wintered outside, uh, I found an upper entrance to be very important. We get lots of snow and lots of ice. I don't know if you've been following all of my videos, but you'll notice when I was moving bees in, some of my hives are covered right up with snow, and the bottom entrance was iced right up. The bottom entrance will ice up, but if you have a top entrance, the release of that warm air will keep that top entrance clear of snow and ice. Uh, because of that, they won't be trapped in the box, and that's very important when wintering outside here in Manitoba anyways. And the other reason is just to be able to release the carbon dioxide and the, the excess moisture out of the hive. But for me, I winter indoors. Um, and because of that, 
it's not as crucial for me to have an upper entrance. I regulate all the air circulation around the rows and around the bees and I have my entrances are open so I have a fairly good exchange of uh, air within the shed around the hives. Two other reasons. The other reason is I don't want an upper entrance um, because I pull honey boxes with uh, with escape boards and I like to have all the activity at the bottom of the hive when they come in and out. I don't want to have any activity up top. I want everything to go through the bottom and up. It just helps clear the boxes a lot easier. Through the cold of the winter though, um, that, you know, minus 25, minus 35, dry, dry. It gets very dry here in the prairies when you get those big blocking highs come sit down on us for months on end. Um, that exchange of cold air into the shed removes moisture from the shed. It removes excess moisture, which is good, but because the air is so dry, my shed will get down to 10%, 15% relative humidity inside. And I like to keep it about 35, 40-ish percent inside. And the reason being is because of condensation. So here I'm talking to you about relieving the condensation from the beehive as being very important. But I also want to create just a little bit of condensation uh, around that cluster in the winter shed just to give the bees something to drink. So I find the magic number around 40% is where that cluster can hold in the winter shed. Instead of venting through a top entrance, which I would have had, I don't have the top entrance here, that that little bit of a shroud of moisture on top kind of con condenses onto the interior of the hive bodies, okay, on the inside. And the bees go and actually, when it's really dry, They'll go and they'll they'll drink from the condensation on the outside. I've watched this, and I think it's very important wintering bees inside that they have access to a little bit of moisture, especially when the relative humidity drops so low inside the sheds through uh, through winter. So, and roundabout answer, that's my reasoning for not using upper entrances. So I just want to mention one more thing, uh, Chester. You made a note. Uh, I'm just a small beekeeper with 100 hives, but your videos are all of help. Thanks. Don't say just a small beekeeper. Everybody's a small beekeeper in another beekeeper's eye. You know, uh, we're all doing the same thing. And regardless how many hives we have, we have four hives or 4,000 hives or 40,000 hives. It's all the same uh, beekeeping work, just on different scales, right? You're gonna do the work with that four hives the same as you're going to do with 40,000 hives. If you're not doing the same work as you're doing with the 40,000 hives as you are with the four hives, then you're doing something wrong. Okay, we all, we have to make sure we keep the basics of beekeeping true. We've got to make sure we're looking after these hives regardless of the number of hives we have. It's all the same work, just different scales. And, and guys will put programs together and strategies to be able to accomplish all that work. But as soon as we start cutting back on the work because of scale, that's when the hives suffer and that's when they start dying. And we have to be very careful. We don't, uh, we don't ignore some of these very true basics of beekeeping that we have to pay attention to. I appreciate your finding the videos useful and guys just keep giving me feedback and I'll make videos on my opinion and we'll just keep the thing spinning here, all right?